Hi, I'm Belinda Carley, the Director of the Institute of Personal Care Science, and I get asked a lot of little questions about proteins, peptides, and collagen in cosmetics. I've also noticed there's a growing number of articles and even misinformation on the internet about these materials when they're used in cosmetic formulas. So this video, I'm gonna set the record straight and show you some evidence and also give you some great tips and information you can use when you want to choose or incorporate proteins, peptides or collagens into your cosmetic formulas. First, I want to start by saying you can get natural sources of hydrolyzed proteins in particular. You can get vegan friendly sources of hydrolyzed proteins in particular and there is a growing number of vegan friendly collagen choices and of course many peptides are synthetic. Now it doesn't matter if the protein, peptide or collagen is vegan, natural or synthetic because ultimately the chemistry of these substances will work on or within the epidermis or the hair cuticle in a similar way depending on a number of other factors which I'm going to cover. So being natural or synthetic or even vegan friendly is really up to your brand philosophy and consumer choice. As for the chemistry, let's cover that now. Well, the first thing we need to talk about when it comes to the chemistry of these substances is the size. The next thing I also need to tell you about is absorption. So first of all, if we look at size, it's important to remember that anything with a molecular weight much above 500 Daltons will have a lot of difficulty getting through the very outer layers of the epidermis. I've got a couple of videos on these topics already. Please watch my video, Cosmetic Absorption by the Skin, to get a detailed understanding of how substances traverse the outer layers of the epidermis and even if they're able to at all. And I have another video which focuses on maximizing cosmetic absorption by using penetration enhancers or formulating your products to enable the best possible absorption. Now, having said that, even if we talk about size, please remember that even if you have a very small substance, if it's not in the right type of formulation base to enable it to traverse across the skin layers, it simply won't get very far. So it's not just size that matters, it also depends a lot on the base of your formula to ensure the best possible delivery. Those videos I've just mentioned will help you with both of those aspects. Now when you have a protein, a collagen fragment, or a peptide that is smaller than 500 Daltons in a good delivery vehicle, it can usually penetrate within the cuticle of the hair quite easily and within the outer layers of the epidermis quite readily. Whether it can get to the basal layers of the epidermis will depend a lot on that delivery system, not just its molecular weight. When it is this small and it can penetrate through the cuticle or the outer layers of the epidermis, these substances are highly moisture binding, so they are able to draw moisture and hold it within the skin, giving it some moisture protective properties. Also because of their chemical structure and the fact that our skin and our hair is also a protein, it means it can add a lot of repair benefits, much like rebricking a broken wall, or some structural integrity within the epidermis. Now when it's got a high molecular weight, and this is often the case with a lot of your hydrolyzed proteins, they're not able to penetrate the outer layers of the stratum corneum. They may be incorporated at the outer layers of the stratum corneum and they'll usually sit on the surface or just beneath the hair cuticle. They're still very moisture binding, so they will still attract a lot of moisture to the skin or the hair and give it some fantastic moisturizing abilities. They can also add to the structural integrity of the skin or the hair at the surface but they're not able to penetrate much below the very outer layer of the epidermis or the hair cuticle itself. So they'll still provide some moisture protective and moisture binding properties, so you're still getting extra suppleness and conditioning from that moisturization. And finally, when you get your proteins much above 2,500 Daltons, they're not able to penetrate at all, but they can still provide some fantastic benefits by being film formers on top of the skin or the hair, and in doing so, they not only again attract moisture with their moisture binding capacity, but they also provide fantastic moisture protection from losses within the skin. They can also add fantastic skin smoothing and hydration benefits, as well as some structural integrity from the outside of the skin and the hair. In other words, regardless of size, these substances still provide some benefits. 
It just depends what you want them to do in that formula, whether you look for a good delivery system and a small molecular weight, or whether a film forming and moisture protective benefit is enough. Now I'm going to look at your hydrolyzed proteins, your collagens and your peptides individually because they do start to differ on that molecular scale and usually what we want them to do. Let's start with hydrolyzed proteins. Now there's some misinformation out there that suggests they shouldn't be charged. This is incorrect. It depends how you want to use them as to whether that charge is important to avoid or have. And there's also misinformation out there that suggests that hydrolyzed proteins have no benefit in a wash off product. So let me show you some facts and some evidence and then you'll see that they do have good applications both when charged or not charged and they still have some great benefits in wash off products as well. Now there are loads of these materials available from a huge variety of suppliers including some of your smaller suppliers. I want to first look at Chromoist WQ by Croda. Now this is a charged substance with a molecular weight of 3500 Daltons. This is a fantastic material for conditioner products, even wash off products because of this charge. This charge means that it has a strong affinity for the hair and therefore binds and absorbs especially well even in wash off products. You can even use this material in face washes, body washes, as well as shampoos and especially conditioners. Now the positive charge means that it gives a really beautiful silky feeling to the product. Again, whether it be a face wash, a body wash, shampoo or conditioner. That positive charge also means it has a strong affinity for the hair or the skin to leave the skin feeling soft even after wash off. Those substantivity profiles also show you that there is a significant amount of the material left on the skin or the hair after it is washed off. So it's not correct to say that hydrolyzed proteins don't have a benefit in wash off products. You've just got to choose the materials that have this sort of data to show their substantivity. And being positively charged, it's highly substantive for even better results. Another material I want to introduce you to is Hydrotrilicum WAA, also by Croda. Now this is a hydrolyzed weed amino acids with quite a small molecular weight. What this means is this material can penetrate into the hair cuticle. It's particularly recommended to help prevent breakage and repair split ends because it can get into the cuticle and act like the bricks to support that structural wall. You'll also see it has significant substantivity when tested in a wash off shampoo product, even at 1%. So again, it shows the benefits of using this type of material, even in a wash off product, because the data is there to show that it's still present even after it's washed off to give those strengthening and repairing benefits. Another couple of materials also by Crota, Crotene Cashmere PE, which is hydrolyzed keratin from wool, and Keratec IFP PE, keratin and hydrolyzed keratin from wool, of various molecular weights, both with fantastic moisture binding properties for benefits to the skin and the hair, and with significant data to show their substantivity even in wash off products. As you can see from the data, they have amazing benefits in a wash off product, especially when used repeatedly. Next, I wanna talk about some of your really innovative hydrolyzed proteins from various plants. In particular, I wanna introduce you to a Bayabab hydrolyzed protein. Now you can get different types of rice hydrolyzed proteins, wheat hydrolyzed proteins, and even Bayabab hydrolyzed proteins but it's really important to make sure that you hold the efficacy data from the exact material you want to use if you want to get the same type of results. For example, you will sometimes get materials from suppliers where they're only able to provide you with a statement of what that material might do, like moisture protection or repairing and structural benefits. If you're really looking for that high performance hydrolyzed proteins or the ones that get the best results, ask them for their efficacy data that goes with those statements. For example, you'll see some examples of the type of efficacy data you can get when you're using Bayabab Teen by Tri-K. This is a hydrolyzed Bayabab protein, but it's really important to take note that not all of your hydrolyzed materials will have the same efficacy data or results. 
So you need to make sure that if you want to use this type of efficacy data or get this type of performance from your hydrolyzed proteins, to get the additional efficacy data, otherwise the material you're sourcing simply may not give you the results you're hoping for. As I've mentioned, and as you've seen already with a few examples, there are various hydrolyzed proteins with various molecular weights and performances. So just because there is one type of hydrolyzed rice protein without the efficacy data, does not mean it will do the same as another hydrolyzed rice protein that does have efficacy data. So remember to get the efficacy data if you want those results, otherwise you can't be sure it's going to have the same performance. Now let's talk about collagen. Now collagen itself is a very high molecular weight substance and in cosmetic products it would typically be a hydrolyzed collagen form. Now as a hydrolyzed collagen it would be subject to similar substantivity or performance as the hydrolyzed proteins I've just spoken about which would also depend on its molecular weight. There are some important exceptions of course and this has to do with how the collagen's been made. Now I want to introduce you to a material called Coal Frag Remastered by LipoTrue. This material has been transiently expressed through wild plant biofactory technology to create a vegan friendly form of collagen amino acid fragments. Now it has a really small molecular weight and it's able to be carried to the deeper layers of the epidermis where you'll find it has some fantastic results. Whenever you're looking at your collagens and comparing them, make sure you look for similar efficacy data to know that the material is going to work the way you're hoping it will. Otherwise, you could find that it's simply coating the hair or the skin. Even if it is just coating the hair or the skin, it would still have moisture protection, skin smoothing and moisture binding properties. So it's still doing something. It just depends how much activity you want that material to have for your finished product. Now in the case of Coal Frag Remastered, you will notice it's got some amazing in vivo results by having a significant reduction in wrinkled length, wrinkle depth, and skin lifting. The in vivo results mean this is what your consumers will actually see. So again, if you're looking for these types of performance results, not just every collagen or hydrolyzed collagen material will achieve this. Make sure you're looking for the efficacy data to support the performance and the results if this is the type of material and results you're hoping to achieve with your product. Finally, let's talk about one of my favorite types of materials and that is peptides. These are one of my favorites because if you can get the peptide to the deeper layers of the epidermis, it will always work. The trick is in how to get it there. So please, again, watch my videos where I talk about maximizing absorption because even if you apply a fantastic peptide in a really ordinary base, it just will not get to those basal layers of the epidermis to provide the signaling it needs to get the results that you're looking for or have been promised by the suppliers. In particular, I wanna show you some examples from Argyroline Amplified by Lipotech. Now this material is a really small molecular weight. So as I say, if you have it in a great carrier base, it will get to the deeper layers of the epidermis where it can have its signaling function to get the best results. And those results really do speak for themselves. You'll see within five days, there's already a reduction in skin roughness, which increases over 28 days. The skin looks more radiant, the skin is more volumized, it has a fantastic lifting effect and reduces the appearance of fine lines and wrinkles. Now, a lot of these peptides are synthetically produced, but their nature mimetics of what we have in the skin. Ultimately, when you're looking at using different proteins, collagens, or peptides, you'll need to consider the size, you'll definitely need to think about what you want the material to do in your formula, and you'll need to think about the carrier or delivery system of your cosmetic product. Just remember with the hair, it's great if it can penetrate the cuticle, but you'll still get benefits if it's coating that hair shaft as well. So too with the skin. At the very least, these materials are highly moisture binding and they will provide moisture protection and moisture binding benefits. They'll also smooth out the skin and the hair when applied. If you want them to penetrate a little further, make sure you're using an effective base for delivery and smaller molecular weight materials. 
Finally, make sure if you're using them in a wash off product that you check for efficacy data that shows substantivity and performance in a wash off product because some of them may not have the same sort of adsorption to the hair or the skin such that they can last after wash off. But as you can see in this video, I've got some great examples of materials that do still have fantastic performance and are especially recommended for your wash off applications. I hope you've enjoyed this video and found a lot of information you can use for your next formulations using proteins, collagens and peptides. Please give the video a thumbs up, please leave any questions or comments below and make sure you subscribe to receive notifications about all our videos. Happy formulating!